From Hollywood, the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production of Foreign Affair, Director Billy Wilder, Stars Rosalind Russell, Marlena Dietrich, John Lund. The Hollywood Screen Directors present an hour-long excursion into laughter. Paramount's Academy Award contending romantic comedy... A Foreign Affair, starring Rosalind Russell, Marlena Dietrich, and John Lund, and introducing the director of the film, Billy Wilder. In Hollywood, when a picture lays an egg... It is traditional for the director to blame the writer and the writer to blame the director. But Billy Wilder is both. As director and writer, he is in the sad spot of having only himself to blame. Since coming here from his native Austria, the poor fellow has been forced to take the rap for such eggs as the major and the minor, double indemnity, the lost weekend, and tonight's story, A Foreign Affair. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Wilder. Thank you very much. Tonight, histrionic history is being made. On this program, I am making my debut as an actor. I will appear briefly but brilliantly as a German waiter. (laughs) You can see I have been uh, working all night on that accent of mine. So please, nobody cough, or you will miss the performance of mine altogether. Co-starring with me, by the way, are Rosalind Russell as Congresswoman T.B. Frost, Marlene Dietrich as Erika von Schlüto, and John Lunt as Captain Pringle. And now, for the first time on the air, here is A Foreign Affair. An American transport plane is flying toward the greatest rubble heap on Earth, the city of Berlin. And in the plane, a party of United States congressmen and one congresswoman. While some of the passengers stare out of the windows, prim Miss Phoebe Frost is immersed in the notes she is carefully writing into a prim black book, which she holds primly propped on a large cake box. Miss Frost, Congresswoman Frost. Yes, Congressman Griffin. We're approaching Berlin. Don't you want to see the ruins? Uh, Yes, Miss Frost. As chairman of this committee, I suggest you observe as much as possible. Congressman Pennicott. This is not a sightseeing tour. We've been sent here to investigate the morale of United States troops. We have heard rumors that they have been fraternizing with German women. When we land, I assure you I shall explore the situation thoroughly and turn in as accurate a report as possible. Captain Pringle, the notification department. Uh, No, have the papers sent over tomorrow. That's right. I have an honor guard formation at the airfield this afternoon for some globe-trotting congressman. Goodbye. Well, Lieutenant Lee, you look despondent. What's the matter, boy? Oh, it's these German dames. They're murder. You mean Trudy, the fireball fraulein? What happened? I lost her. You run out of candy bars? A Russian sergeant came along with a pound of rancid butter. (laughs) You're an amateur, Lee. Now, I wouldn't be afraid of a Russian general with a ton of caviar. Take a look at these. Nylons? Where'd you get them? Brandenburg Gate. Well, you're going to get into trouble messing around with that high-voltage nightclub singer. Erika von Schluto? Why, she's just as sweet and harmless as an artillery battery. Yeah. They say she used to run around with a lot of those big-shot Nazis. Rumors, jealous rumors. Hey, man, look at the time. We got a parade for that committee from stateside. Going to investigate our morale. You know, I can't understand why. I don't have any. Sir, the honor guard is formed. Parade! Rest! 
Once more, gentlemen, it is our honor and privilege to turn out with the brass band and welcome a visiting committee. This time it's to investigate our morale. It seems back home they've got the idea that all we do is swing in hammocks with beautiful blonde frau lines and swap cigarettes for castles on the Rhine. Well, some of you do go overboard once in a while. This isn't a Boy Scout camp. We've got a tough job to do, and by and large, we're handling it darn well. Now, this committee is going to be here for five days. I'm counting on you men to behave, period. Now I see our guests have arrived. Company! Attention! A very fine fight. Who's my ears that stop ringing? Where is Colonel Plummer? I am Colonel Plummer. Congressman Pennycock? Yes. May I extend the welcome of the American military government? As chairman of this committee, permit me to bring you greetings from the people of the United States. Uh, these are my colleagues, Congressman Giffen, Salvatore, Delighted Krauss, Delighted. Yandel, Delighted. and this is Congresswoman Phoebe Frost. From Iowa, from the 9th District of Iowa. Delightful of Congress to send us a lady representative. You may dispense with the soft soap, Colonel. And what, may I ask, is the meaning of this reception? I'm afraid I don't understand. I came here hoping to find an army taking its task seriously. Instead, I find a military band. What, no drum majorettes? We had some, but we sent them back to the barracks. They forgot to shave. This is scarcely a jesting matter, Colonel. Perhaps we can discuss it at lunch. May I carry that box for you? Uh, No, 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 thank you. I undertook to deliver it to a Captain John Pringle here in Berlin. I don't suppose you could tell me where to find him. I could try. Captain Pringle. Oh, is he here? Captain Pringle reporting, sir. Congresswoman Frost. This is Captain Pringle. This is for you, Captain. Happy birthday. Uh, birthday? Yes, it's a cake. Oh, my birthday, I'd forgotten. You mean, uh, you brought this all the way from the States? Murdoch, Iowa. Well, well, my home state, how is good old Iowa? 67% Republican, thank you. (laughs) I was entrusted with this cake by the daughter of one of my constituents. Well, open it. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, what do you know? Oh, isn't that sweet? Love from Dusty. In pink icing. Yeah, great kid, Dusty. How long since you've seen her? Dusty? Oh, four years. Don't you ever get leave? Oh, I don't want any leave. You don't? Oh, well, that that is... uh, Personal feelings don't matter here. Winning the peace, you know? Oh, that's fine, but... uh, Captain Pringle. Yes, ma'am? That that thing hanging out of your pocket, uh, it looks like it... A woman uh, stocking. Captain Pringle. Colonel Plummer. Do your officers usually go around looking like the hosiery department at Macy's? Stocking? Oh, oh, you mean this stocking. Oh, well, uh, my mother sent me these. Just got them today. And the color just matches your arms. Yes, I I mean, no. They're a present for Dusty. I'll mail them from here. Uh, Surprise, you know. It's her birthday next month. Why, Captain Pringle, how thoughtful. And now here you are with a birthday cake all alone. Well, they'll be my buddies. We'll open a case of root beer, light the candles, sing some songs. It'll be just like good old Iowa, almost. Oh, well, may I say that if you're a sample of the army spirit, I feel better already. Oh, I'm a sample, all right. Goodbye, Miss Frost. Goodbye. Give my regards to the Lonely Hearts Club. Yes, sir. Oh, man, look at this cake. When are we going to eat it? Eat it. Are you crazy? I'm going to the black market and parlay this pastry into a mattress. Hey, you up there. Erica. Johnny? Is it you? That's my signal. Come on, throw down the key. Okay, mattress, come with Daddy. Whew, I 
Something's heavy. Hey, woman. Erica. Here I am, Johnny. You great big gorgeous blonde Don't doll. hold me so tight, Johnny. You're hurting me. Why are you so mean to me? Listen, you menace. I worry about you. I bring you presents. You tell me presents? I'm... Presents? Where, Johnny? Where? Hey, hey, get out of my pockets. What is it, Johnny? Oh, come on, lay off. You're tickling me. Oh, stockings. Oh, they're so sheer, so beautiful. Sure. And I brought you another present. Where, Johnny? What? A mattress. A real mattress. Where did you find it? Well, it started out as a half a dozen eggs and a cup of sugar. <laughs> but you're not going to get it. Johnny, the one on my bed, it's, it's a ruin, like Berlin. I can't sleep. No mattress will help you sleep. What you, what you Germans need is a better conscience. I have a good conscience. I have a new Führer. You. Heil, Johnny. You hire me once more and I'll knock your teeth in. How, Johnny? With a kiss? Like this? <laughs> your mother must have been frightened by a blowtorch. <laughs> With my luck, it's Eisenhower. Oh, Johnny, hide in the other room. Right. Coming, yes, yes, coming. Your name's Schludo? Well, an American military policeman. Your name Erica Schludo? No. You're the dame that sings at the Lorelei nightclub? Yes. And your name's not Erica Schludo? My name is Erika von Schludo. Ooh, von Schludo. Nobility, huh? Well, if your von Highness doesn't mind, it says here on this von paper that you've been an active von Nazi and was sentenced last month to a von labor camp to pick up some von bricks. There must be some mistake. <laughs> I've been completely cleared. I'm on the white list now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir, Captain Pringle. Okay, Bob Hope. Let's see those orders. <laughs> They're four weeks old. Uh, yes, sir, there's been a lot of people to check. This case has been all straightened out. I'll set things right at the denazification office myself. Yes, sir. Okay, that's all. Take off. Yes, sir. Johnny, you shouldn't have told him that. I haven't been cleared. If they look in the files, they'll find out. Stop worrying. I signed your papers. Johnny, you could get into trouble. I got into trouble the day I met you. Goodbye, baby doll. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, as chairman of the committee, I wish to thank Colonel Plummer and his staff for this pleasant and educational luncheon. But now, duty calls. If uh, you gentlemen and Miss Frost will just go along with Lieutenant Fairfield here, he has arranged a tour of the area for you. Right this way, please. Uh, visiting congressman. Sometimes I'd like to send a committee to investigate morale in Washington. Call it. What Hello. the devil? Oh, Miss Frost. Say, you'd better run along or your party will leave without you. Iowans, Colonel Plummer, are not the type for guided tours. Just what is it you want, Miss Frost? Colonel, driving over here, I was shocked. Shocked. <laughs> I understand, but you must realize that Berlin it's is a city... It's not Berlin, Colonel. It's our men. American soldiers walking right up to German women and making dates without being properly introduced. Well, heavens to Betsy. <laughs> Holding hands. <laughs> Holding hands openly, right in public. Fraternization is legal, you know. This committee may have something to say about that. Miss Frost, what is it you wish? I just want to tell you that Congresswoman Phoebe Frost isn't going to be bamboozled by any smooth talk and guided tours. Nobody's trying to bamboozle you, Miss Frost. You're free to do whatever you wish. As far as this office is concerned, you can investigate the morals of the American army first-handed. Don't be ridiculous, Colonel. I couldn't... Colonel Plummer, you have given me an idea. Now, wait a minute. For the honor and glory of the United States, Colonel, I am going out and get myself picked up. <laughs> So what's with it? Did you have any luck with the German doll? Nah. I says to her, I says, look, I am Private Joe Bilks of the United States Army. Yeah, what does she say? 
She says she already has a candy bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. A plutocrat. Well, I... Hey, do you see what I see? Wow. A size 14. <laughs> Somehow she don't look like a German girl. Oh, that is strudel if I ever saw one. Come on. Hey, hey, Fraulein. Hey, uh, ein moment, hey, Fraulein. Hold on a minute, will you? Uh, guten afternoon, Fraulein. Oh. <laughs> Hiya, strudel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you get that? Yeah, the conversation is launched. Hey, uh, strudel, uh, das ist mein Freund Mike. Mike. Yeah. And das is my friend, Joe. Yeah. Uh, uh, Fraulein, uh, you like little uh, Thompson Machen, a uh, Lorelei Cabaret? Huh? Yeah. What's the matter with her? Yeah. Oh, fine. This kid kills me. All she can say is yeah. That's bad. <laughs> Uh, Fraulein, what is your name? Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, your name? Gretchen. Gretchen what? Gretchen, uh, Gesundheit. How do you like that? We're fraternizing with a sneeze. <laughs> Some, uh, some hot spot, the Lorelei, huh, Fraulein? Ah, she's a dope. Hey, here comes the champagne. Put it right here, waiter. Das is five packs cigarettes, please. Four packs. Now it's five packs. All right, take them. <laughs> this is eine kleine clip joint. <laughs> How do you like these prices? Maybe we better write Congress to boost our cigarette ration. Why, you... Hey, uh, uh, what? What did you say? Yeah. And a girl with a vocabulary like that, you could run for Congress yourself back home. Mm. Uh, so what's Congress? A bunch of salesmen that's got their foot in the right door. Listen, for my dough, you can have Congress and the Senate and 10 points. 20 points. 15 points. I'll take it. You got it. Hey, get a load of that. You want me to sing, boy? Oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, brother. <laughs> That is strudel a la mode. Hubba, hubba. Want to buy some illusions Slightly used second hand They were lovely illusions Reaching high, built on sand They had a touch of paradise a spell you can't explain For in this crazy paradise You are in love with pain Want to buy some illusions Slightly used, just like new Such romantic illusions And they're all about you I'll sell them all for a penny they make pretty souvenirs take my lovely illusions some for loss some for tears want to buy some illusions Slightly used second hand They were lovely illusions Reaching high, built on sand They had a touch of paradise A spell you can't explain For in this crazy paradise You are in love Want to buy some illusions Slightly used Just like new 
Such romantic illusions And they're all about you I'll sell them all for a penny They make pretty souvenirs Take my lovely illusions Some for loves Some for Thank you, boys. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Psst. Erica. Johnny. Come here. Behind this pillar. What's the matter, Johnny? You see over there? That woman? That's no woman. That's a congressman. She thinks I'm Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Jack Armstrong? Oh, never mind. I just don't want her to see me. Hey, that's the kind of pastry makes you drool on your bib. They say she was right up there with a major league Nazis, Goebbels girl or Goering's, one of them anyway. How does she get away with it? Uh, she hooked herself some big army brass. Hey, do you think this uh, sphinx here can dance? Uh, come on, Gretchen, how's my uh, kleine Tanzmachen, huh? Come on, Gretchen, loosen up. Don't you know how that to... That cake! Do... Will you, hmm? That's the cake I brought from Iowa. The cake on the table. Gretchen, what are you saying? Let me go, you big ape. Oh, brother, let me out of here. Waiter, where did you get that cake? What you want? I know that cake. I brought it from Iowa. Where this restaurant gets food is our business, not yours. That's enough out of you. This cake is confiscated. Oh, Captain Pringle. So this is what happened to my cake. What do you know about this? It was stolen from my Jeep in the Brandenburg Gate area, Miss Frost. You know, the black market. I traced the cake here. And just what do you intend doing about it? Oh, I'll take care of the matter. Oh, no, no. Where's my notebook? Oh, there now. Uh, what exactly is the name of this rat trap? Uh, the Lorelei. The Lorelei. And what is the name of that woman? Uh, what woman? The singer here. Oh, 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 that woman. I think it's, uh, uh Erica. Erica what? Uh, Erica, uh, von Schluto. How do you spell it? With an umlaut. Aha! Uh, I thought so. Huh? Even her name is subversive. But, uh... But, uh, Miss Frost, uh... Why ask about her? Because there's something funny going on around here. And as a congresswoman of Iowa, I am about to do my duty. And so, gentlemen... And Miss Frost, that's why I ask you to this conference. You had to get the picture. When we moved into Germany, we found a country of open graves and closed hearts. We've tried to turn it into a civilized state. It's a tough, thankless, lonely job. Oh, sure, sure, some of us get out of line occasionally. But remember this. For the first time in history... You're asking the same generation of soldiers to be both valorous and wise. As chairman of this committee, Colonel, let me tell you, we buy every word of your speech. Yes, sir. I don't buy it. I know, Miss Frost. You're from Iowa. What about notorious Nazi sirens parading themselves before our boys? What about that? For instance? Erica von Schuto. That's who, who works, if that is the word for it, at a dive called the Lorelei. Pardon me, did you say Erica von Schluto? I did. I uh, must ask you to drop this particular matter. Aha! You're hiding something, Colonel Plummer. There are some things which must be left to the discretion of the military. The last time someone tried to gag me, Colonel, he tried it with a mink coat. But I didn't stop talking until the president of that particular company wound up in jail, even though I did get pneumonia that winter. Come in, come in. Uh, morning, Miss Frost. Ah, Captain Pringle. No doubt you're wondering why I sent for you. Uh-huh. Why uh, all the motion picture equipment? You'll see presently. I simply cannot get myself to trust anybody in uniform. Oh, now, Miss Frost... Is, anybody but you. Me? I suppose it's because we're both Iowans. And, Captain, 
I need your help. Uh, glad to be of service, ma'am. Now, what do you know about Fräulein von Sluto? Oh, just gossip. She may have known a couple of minor party members. Small fry. Nothing worth your attention. Perhaps. Uh, a warrant officer thinks she's in this old German newsreel. So, uh, if you'll turn off the lights, Captain. Okay. Probably just a waste of time, Miss Frost. This is the opening of the 1943 opera season. Yeah, top German brass. There's Hitler at... Oh, no. There she is. The von Schluto woman. Who's the uniform she's hanging on to? I think... I think it's Hans Otto Birgel. Who's he? Oh, he... He uh, had a little something to do with the uh, Gestapo... He's dead. Killed himself. Wasn't he an important party member? Oh, so-so. Look at the way she's holding on to him. Well, maybe she doesn't know him. Maybe she had a dizzy spell, and the first thing she could catch was his elbow. Uh -huh. And is that a dizzy spell? Hitler himself. Kissing her hand, talking to her, laughing with her. I think that's quite enough. You can put the lights on now, Captain. Yeah, sure. It's common talk, you know, that some American army officer is protecting that woman. It's him that I want. Do you think you'll find him? Of course. The only way he can see her is by visiting her. She can't come to him. Is that right? Therefore, to catch him, we've got to watch her place. Smart idea. And I'll watch it myself, personally, night and day. No, <laughs> we'll watch it together. We will? I want to face that man myself, face him right down. Oh, well, it's liable to be a long, dull process. You and I can afford any time required by so brazen a case. If necessary, I'll go to the general. Oh, no, not the general. I will, and to the War Department, and to the president. And if he doesn't do it, yes. I'll see Drew Pearson. <laughs> Our full hour presentation of A Foreign Affair continues in just a moment. But first, a word about next week's show. Starting next Sunday, the NBC Theater will be heard over most of these stations at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just a half hour later than heretofore. And our story next week is the gay and charming musical You Were Meant for Me, starring Academy Award nominee Dan Daly in his original role. Our presentation of A Foreign Affair continues after a brief pause for station identification. NBC Theater is presenting the Hollywood Screen Director's hour-length production of A Foreign Affair, starring Rosalind Russell, Marlena Dietrich, and John Lund, and introducing the director of the film, Billy Wilder. Life in Berlin is becoming very complicated indeed for Captain John Pringle. Johnny has joined Congresswoman Phoebe Frost in tracking down the American army officer who's been carrying on an affair with Erika von Schluto, a nightclub singer and former girlfriend of Nazi Hans Otto Bergel. The task has proved to be an unusually frustrating one for the captain, since he happens to be the man Phoebe Frost is looking for. Right now, Johnny Pringle is doing his best to dampen her Iowa enthusiasm as they sit parked in his Jeep in front of Erica's bomb-shattered apartment. Oh, it's after curfew. So soon she won't be coming tonight. She's waiting for somebody, or she wouldn't leave the lights on. Maybe she's pickling peaches. 
Not her. Hmm. Pickled peaches. Golly, but you must miss Iowa. Oh, sure, sure. No morale problems there. We had the lowest juvenile delinquency rate in the country. Until two months ago. What happened? A little boy in Des Moines took a blowtorch to his mother. <laughs> we dropped right back to 16th place. Must have been humiliating. It was, especially for the little boy's mother. A Republican, you know. <laughs> well, those things do happen. Oh, oh golly, I'm sleepy. I'm... Look out for that horn. <laughs> Shh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh-oh, that did it. Crickets? Something dropped. It's a key. A key? Oh, whatever for? Apparently the man honks the horn. That's the signal. Johnny? Johnny? Come on, hide into the shadows. Johnny? Where are you, Johnny? Johnny. His name's Johnny. Well, there's lots of Johnnies in the army. But this eliminates all the Jims, Bobs, and Georges. Johnny? Hussy. Shh. Is somebody here? Oh. Hello, Johnny. I don't know who you're referring to. I am Captain Pringle of the United States Army, and this lady with me is a member of the Congress of the United States. And we have reason to believe that you are consorting with a member of our armed forces. What gives you that idea? The key you dropped. Oh. That was for the milkman. Facts, Miss von Schluto, if you please. You are an American woman. Uh, what is the man's name? No lipstick. <laughs> and what a curious way to do your hair. Are you now, or have you ever been, connected with a member of the armed forces of the United States? If so, what is his name? Perhaps if you change the line of your eyebrows a little. I'm sorry, but I don't know what you're talking about. Good night. Good night. Good night, Captain. Whatever your name is. Well, we might as well call it a night. I suppose I do look awful. No, you don't. We were only allowed 60 pounds of luggage. I didn't bring any makeup. Never let another woman tell you how you look. No lipstick. Ask a man. No mascara either. I... I think you look charming. In a windblown sort of way. <laughs> you're, you're just being polite. Oh, no, no, really. You're sweet. Now, get, getting back to that woman, the man behind her, he must really be important. Important enough to cover up for her. Oh, I don't know. You... You read stories like this every day in the papers? That's it. Papers. The man must have signed her papers. Oh, no. Find the signature on her papers and we've got our man. Well, it's getting late. Let's go home now. No, I want to see that file right now. In the middle of the night? Sh shouldn't we get permission? Did we get permission to land in Normandy? Let's go. <laughs> Salzman, Schmerner, Schlumann, Schussel. Uh, oh, here are Schlutos. Anton, Emil, Frist, Godfrey. No Erica. No Erica? Oh, that's no. too bad. Well, come on, let's go. I have to write my grandmother a letter. I've neglected her shamefully. Oh, well, I could have sworn I... Captain Pringle, it's Erica von Schluto. Von, it's under Von. Oh, no, why, that, that's silly. Like O'Brien. You wouldn't look under B. You'd look under O. All right, let's look under O. <laughs> under V. Oh, it must be here now. Von Schnick, Von Rutelsheim. Did it ever occur to you that there might be some extenuating circumstances? This man is making a mockery of his country's uniform. That's a hot one. You expect him to be an ambassador, a salesman of goodwill. Well, that's not the way it works. Von Sound. Suppose you stop playing detective and ask yourself why he skidded it off the road. Von Sandberg, I'll tell you why. No moral breaks, Von Salmon. Sure, Von he's Sandberg. going too fast. Von Only during the war, he couldn't go fast enough. Get on that beachhead. Get through those Von tank Sandberg. traps. Speed, lots of it. Then the war's over, and you expect him to ram on those brakes Von and stop like that. Von Salzburg? Yes, Captain Pringle, just like that. 
Von Sargis? Von Sastin? Maybe he needs a little affection. Oh, or would you know about that, Congresswoman Frost? Mm-hmm. Are you human enough to know about affection? Yes. I know about that. It might interest you know, well, to know that I was in love once. Not really. He was a Southern Democrat. <laughs> we served on a committee together. I despised his politics, but I loved the Southern syrup in his voice and the lazy way he put his arm around me. But do you know what he was trying to do? What? Sway my vote. <laughs> One night he drove me home. He said he was... Well, it was yearning for my lips, but it would have meant betraying my platform and my constituents. What did you do? I filibustered. You what? I just kept talking, poems and things, the midnight ride of Paul Revere. I got through that one twice. Yes, I... I do know about affection, Captain, but we still haven't found her file. Now, von Schloss, von Schlossning... You haven't been kissed since. None of your business, von Schlumann, von... Von Schluto. Carl, Donner, ah, if it's here, it should be this next hour. Congresswoman. What? What was that file? What, 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 what are you doing? That Southern Democrat isn't the only guy who's yearned for those lips. Captain Pringle, keep, keep, keep away, don't, don't, don't you come. Why? You're no Nazi. Since when has it been subversive to kiss a Republican? But I, I'm a Congresswoman. You're a lovely woman. And you're going to get kissed. Now, listen. L- listen, uh, listen, my children, and you shall hear... It won't hear do any good. ...the midnight ride of Paul Revere. Congresswoman Darling, oh, I'm asking oh, for the oh, floor. Oh, on the 8th of April in 75... I demand the floor. Harvey, a man is now alive. Mm. <laughs> oh, you're... You're entirely out of order. Objection overruled. Oh, John. Come on. Let's get out of here. I know where there's a beam of moonlight with your name on it. But the, but the file... Bright moonlight or dusty old files. What'll it be? Oh. Moonlight, John. Moonlight. Oh, hurry, darling. The hours are running out. And I want to spend every magic moment with you. <laughs> been so long. Hi. What has my kleine Liebling been doing? Your kleine Liebling has been making charm with the bloodhound. The congresswoman? Yeah. We're engaged. Engaged? We sat and held hands and whistled Shine On Harvest Moon. (laughs) It's better than having my head chopped off. Something that may happen to you. You were in pretty deep, weren't you? Deep? What deep? You and Hans Otto Birgel. He's dead. And that Führer of yours, kissing your hand, little jerk. Don't talk like that. Why not? How much of a Nazi were you, anyway? Oh, Johnny, don't be cross now. I love you very much. Now, isn't that nice? I want to go with you to America. I want to climb the Statue of Liberty. You want to get down in that basement at Fort Knox? (laughs) (laughs) Got some vodka, and I had the phonograph fixed. Sorry, I got a date. A date? With my fiancé. Have to keep her hogtied till she leaves tomorrow. But you'll come tomorrow night, won't you, Johnny? Sure, I guess so. So long, doll.
Take my lovely illusions Some for loss Some for I never knew champagne could taste so good. <laughs> Why did you insist on coming to the Lorelei? Oh, no, Johnny. It's our last night. I want to have fun. Sure, sure. I know how it is. Uh, I don't know whether it's the champagne, but I'm absolutely dizzy with happiness. Before I was just drifting on a gray sea all alone. Only suddenly you get scared. You so you hoist up your heart and and you wait. And nobody passes by. Just gray waves. Phoebe, don't. Then out of nowhere comes a boat. So unexpected. All white sails on the horizon. To you, my beautiful boat. Phoebe, you make me feel awful. Well, you are beautiful, and you're fun, and, and you're good to me. Someday you might find out I'm not so good. Look, look, here's Miss Von Schluto. May I join you? No. Now, don't be rude, John. Thank you. Have you made any progress uh, tracking down that man? What man? <laughs> my man. Oh, a little progress. Only that's all postponed because of another man. <laughs> my man. Isn't he beautiful? Yeah. Uh, uh, some more champagne, darling. Phoebe, please. You've had enough. When are you leaving Berlin, oh, Miss tomorrow. Frost? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. This is our last night together. What a shame. He'll be so lonely without you. <laughs> oh, no, no, he won't. He'll think about his little Phoebe, won't you? Sure, I will. Night after night, all alone in his barracks. Ah, <laughs> Isn't he sweet? Yes, I think so. Hey, hey, Pringle, uh, Johnny. Oh, oh, hello, Lee. Won't you, won't you join us? Uh, no, thanks, can't. Colonel Plummer's looking for you. Uh, John, I don't want you to go. What does he want? What? I don't know, but you better get over to his office before he pops an artery. Oh, of all the times... Well, come on, Phoebe. No, no, I shall be very pleased to take care of Miss Frost. Oh, but... But I better take her home. Go on, get going. She'll be all right. Oh, thanks, Lee. <laughs> Captain Pringle reporting, sir. Well, if it isn't the great lover. Yes, sir. What? I mean, no, sir. Listen, Passion Flower, I'm going to blow the whistle on you. Yes, sir. Pringle, I honestly think you have as good a war record as any man in this town. You've been on the first team ever since Normandy, and I know you were among the first ten men across from Ogden Bridge. I also know why you were in such a hurry. <laughs> well, uh, that's a long story, sir. So is this Erica von Schluto. Captain Pringle, we've been wise to you and her all along. Peekin, huh? We also know that you've been playing a double bill with the Congress lady from Iowa. I'd appreciate it if you'd leave her out of this. You would, huh? Captain, you're to stay away from that certain party. Strictly off limits, understand? That's okay with me. It was all washed up anyway. Just a minute, get this straight. You're to stay away from the congresswoman. Phoebe? Why? Because you're going to pick up the torch for Fraulein von Schluto and lug it again in public. Oh, what do you know? Did you ever hear of Hans Otto Burgo? Sure, Erica's Nazi boyfriend, but he's dead now. <laughs> dead nothing, he's very much alive. And thanks to you, he's kicking. What have I got to do with it? Plenty. Someone tipped him off that his girl has been seen around with an American officer. Well, what about it? That only... Oh. Mm-hmm. The way we see it, he's just about due to come out and kill you both. <laughs> That's cute. So now, uh, go on back and fan those flames, Romeo. Stick around the floor line until uh, Burgle shows up. Well, when can I expect him... I wouldn't want my nose to be shiny. Any time from here on in. Any other questions? Yeah. Why did I ever join the army? <laughs> oh, I feel so 
wonderful. <laughs> Sit down, Miss Frost. <laughs> Oh, but you still haven't told me why you asked me up here to your apartment. <laughs> it's very simple, Miss Frost. Huh? I want my man. Ah, uh, the American officer? You are still a little drunk, and maybe that's good. <laughs> because this is, this is a beastly thing I'm going to do. Hmm? But you must understand what happened to us here. We've all become animals with exactly one instinct left, self-preservation. It has been a life of misery. But now I've found a man, and through him a roof and a job and food, and I'm not going to lose him. Oh, why tell all this to me? Because you want the same man. What? What did you say? Here, take my handkerchief. You'll need it. You mean John? He's such a nice boy, really. He hated what he was doing to you, you know. He came up here so miserable and sorry for you. There's his signal. That, that couldn't be John. It... But it is. One moment, Johnny, darling. I, I, I don't want him to see me. I... I'm afraid it's too late now. Just sit over there in the corner. Hiya, doll baby. Hello. What's the matter? No kiss for your Kleiner Liebling? Oh, I'm sorry I had to show up at the Lorelei with that Congress dame. She doesn't mean a thing. Nothing, Johnny. Just laughs. Come on, break out that vodka of yours and... Oh. You're a very funny man, Captain Pringle. I... I'm sorry. So am I. Not for myself. For you. For you. <laughs> Colonel Plummer, I can't go through with this. I'm sorry, Captain, but that's how it is. I know it's tough on you, but we can't afford to let Burgo slip out of the net now. And it's not me, it's Miss Frost. I told you what happened last night. Sorry. But why can't I straighten things out with her? Because, because according to our information, Virgil is coming out of his rat hole tonight. So tonight you're spending your time with Fräulein von Schluto at the Lorelei Club. I didn't expect you. That makes two of us. Tonight I have a surprise for you. What is it? Oh, Liebling, my number's coming up. I got a surprise for you. So is mine. I must go now. I'll be back. You all right? Huh? Oh, hello, Sergeant. You all right, Captain? Sure, like a clay pigeon. We think we spotted Burgo. Well, then arrest him. Well, we aren't positive it's Burgo. When will you know? When he tries to shoot you. Thank you, Sergeant. You've been very helpful. Oh, don't worry, Captain Pringle. We'll be covering you when Burgo shows. Just as long as it isn't with a sheet. See you later, sir. Yeah, but will I see you? Johnny, here I am back. Yeah. What's the surprise? Tonight, I try a new way of doing my number. I sing in the dark. No lights. Hey, you can't do that. But it's so effective, Johnny. There, the light's out. Oh. Oh, brother. Nice and dark, isn't it, Johnny? Here. Give me your hand while I sing. Make it fast, baby. Get those lights on again. Want to buy some illusions Slightly used second hand They were lovely illusions Don't Each move, Captain, and don't turn around. What? Who? What, Captain? A gun. A and who, Captain? Allow me to introduce myself. Hans Adobergo. How do you do? She sings beautifully, doesn't she? For Listen, this Captain. Crazy paradise, you are in love with pain. Yes, pain, Captain. Pain Want as I have known, as you soon shall know. Very soon. You won't get away with it, Burger. I don't expect Just to, Captain. Like but it shall have its compensations, her death and yours. Listen to her. You won't. If she finishes her song, Captain, the lights will go on and we can't have that. 
Neither you nor she will ever see the lights again. You loved her, Captain. Now die with her music in your ears. I'll feed her, Zane. <laughs> Come in. Colonel Plummer? Well, Miss Frost, uh, sit down, please. You wanted to see me? Yes. Yes, there's something I want to talk to you about. You know, Miss Frost, there's a lot of rubble around here. You walk around on it, you're apt to get conked by a loose brick. Please, Colonel Plummer. I, I feel kind of responsible about that loose brick. That certain captain... No, no, I, I, I don't want to hear any There's more. not much to be said in his defense, but there is this. He isn't enjoying his little romance with Fräulein von Schulte. I'm not listening. I... Miss Frost, Captain Pringle has been acting as a decoy to trap the Fräulein's old boyfriend. Hans Otto Bergel? Yes. He's alive. You mean John was acting under orders? It had to be that way after he met you. You see... Oh. Excuse me. Colonel Plumber. Lieutenant Fairfield, military police. Yes, Lieutenant. There's been a shooting at the Lorelei. I'm on my way over there now. Any particulars? Nothing. Right, I'll meet you there. Miss Frost, you'd better come with me. There's been a shooting. John? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, this is it. Come on. Okay, Lieutenant Fairfield, where is he? Under that sheet. Dead. Oh, no. You wait here, Miss Frost. I'll have a look. Mm hmm. Two plugs right through the kisser. Right through the. Oh. Oh, she fainted. No sense of humor. <laughs> Where's Pringle? Pringle! Right here, sir. You all right? Fine, thanks to the sergeant here. He dropped Burgo with his first shot. Ah, uh, shucks, Captain. Don't give me all the credit. The other boys got in there two bits worth. Well, Pringle, you'd better attend to that congresswoman of yours. She's fainted. Phoebe? Here? Right over there. Now, Lieutenant, how about uh, Fräulein von Schluto? Two MPs have her in back. Are you crazy? Leaving her with those poor defenseless boys? Go get her. <laughs> uh, here she is now, sir. Come on, sister. You got a date with that pile of on bricks I was telling you about. I have papers here which they am on the white list. And we know just how you got there. It wasn't exactly, if you'll pardon the non-Aryan expression, kosher. I don't understand. If you'll just ask Captain Pringle. Forget Captain Pringle. Colonel Plummer, sir. Colonel Plummer. Oh, you must be that wonderful Colonel Plummer I've heard so much about. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Only most of the time, they call me delicious. <laughs> take her away, Corporal. Come on, sister. Colonel, can you take me to my apartment while I change? Oh, uh, I guess so. Come on, Corporal. You, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Go along with the Corporal. Watch him. I sure will, sir. You, Platoon Sergeant. Yes, sir. You watch those two guys. Yes, sir. Pleasure. Uh, Colonel Plummer. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. I was just thinking, sir. So was I. You watch them. Like a hawk. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Come to think of it, I'd better watch him. <laughs> oh, oh. Phoebe. Phoebe, darling. Oh, Johnny. What happened? You fainted. He said there were two slugs in your kisser. <laughs> there ought to be. Oh, no. I'm sorry about everything, except the time with you. John, help me up. There, there now. John, I, I love you. Oh, no. Oh, me, I'm just a wham boy. The kind of guy you needed, somebody to marry. Well? Oh, oh, not me. I'm a heel, certified, got papers to prove it. John, come here. John. I tell you I'm a heel. You're a man and you're going to get kissed. Oh, now listen, Phoebe, listen. 
Listen, my children, it and you shall hear you the women they ride Paul Revere Come on, Captain April Darling, I'm asking for the floor. Hardly I demand the alive. floor. Hardly a man is now alive. You are entirely out of order. Objection overruled. Oh, Phoebe. Yes, John. How about overruling that objection again? <laughs> In just a moment, our stars will return. Next Sunday and every week thereafter, the NBC Theater will be heard over most of these stations at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And leading off the Screen Director Series in the new time spot, the delightfully nostalgic musical, You Were Meant for Me, starring Academy Award nominee Dan Daly in his original role. And now, here are tonight's stars. Rosalind Russell, Marlena Dietrich, and John Lund. And Screen Director, Billy Wilder. Okay, Billy, as a director, you're entitled to sound off. What did you think of our performance? Well, since you asked me, I thought that... Uh... Oh, no, 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 wait a minute, John. Why let Billy Wilder do all the criticizing? That's right. He tried his hand at acting himself tonight. Well, uh, here's what I think of your performance. Stop trying to change the subject. Now, he played the part of the waiter at the Lorelei nightclub. Show us, Billy, now. Do your lines again. Now, come on, Billy. You're an actor now. I said, champagne is five packs, please. I'm sorry, you're underplaying the line, I'd boy. say he was overplaying I'd it. I'd say he shouldn't have played it at all. See? <laughs> you're all confused. Actually, I was magnificent. Well, speaking for all of us, Billy, you certainly are a magnificent director. <laughs> Working on the set with you was a privilege we'll never forget. How true, how true. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, Billy, I hear that you screen directors have quite an array of shows coming up, huh? I'm looking forward to hearing Dan Daly's next week in... You were meant for me. And I'm counting on catching the perfect marriage with Loretta Young. For me, it's a toss-up between Fred McMurray in Suddenly It's Spring and Bob Hope in The Ghost Breakers. Well, you'll be hearing them all on Screen Director's Assignment. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, Billy. Good night. Good night. And good night to you, Rosalind Russell, Marlena Dietrich, John Lund, and Billy Wilder. Tonight's cast included Wally Mayer, Henry Rowland, Herb Vigran, Gil Stratton Jr., Sam Edwards, Eddie Fields, Clark Gordon, Dan Riss, Bob Bruce, Paul McVeigh, and Helen Andrews. Script was by Richard Allen Simmons. Original music composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Bill Carr. Your announcer has been Frank Barton. A Foreign Affair was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is the Technicolor production, Whispering Smith, starring Alan Ladd, Robert Preston, and Brenda Marshall. John Lund is soon to be seen co-starring with Paulette Goddard and MacDonald Carey in the Paramount picture, Bride of Vengeance. Rosalind Russell will soon be seen in the new Columbia Pictures comedy, My Next Husband. Listen next week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production, You Were Meant for Me, Director, Lloyd Bacon, Star, Dan Daly. The Screen Directors Guild program came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.